Hi everyone, my name is Karen, this is my channel Rather Be Reading, and today I'm bringing to you my October wrap up. October was not my best reading month, but it definitely was not my worst reading month. It was definitely an improvement from my September reading month, where I was a little bit slumpy. Um, I didn't manage to film a mid-month wrap-up this month, which I apologise for, so this video may be a little longer than I would like, but we're just going to have to deal with it. But as always, we will start off with my statistics for the October reading month. In the month of October, I completed a total of 16 books, which I'm really happy with because all 16 books were novels this month. I didn't end up reading any graphic novels, any manga, any novellas. It was just 16 full-length novels. This month of the 16 books, I read 8 in physical copy, 2 ebooks, and I listened to 6 audiobooks in the month of October. And then excluding the audiobooks as always, so with the remaining 10 books, I read seven books that I owned and three from the library. So more books than I own from the library once again. So I'm really happy with that. I read a total of 6,216 pages in the month of October, which averaged out to 201 pages per day, which I'm really happy with because I'd been trying to keep that above 200 and I slipped well below that in September. So I'm really happy that I managed to just barely keep that above um, the 200 page per day mark. The longest book I read was 613 pages, but just as an interesting side note, I did read five books in the month of October that were over 500 pages. So I was reading longer books as well this month, and the shortest book that I read was 197 pages. The highest star rating that I gave was a 4.5 star, and the lowest star rating that I gave was a 2 star, and my average star rating for the month worked out to be 3.48 stars, which isn't too bad. I would love to see that higher, but it just has not been my reading year in 2017, which you know if you've been watching my channel. So now let's jump in and talk about all 16 books that I managed to complete in the month of October. The first book that I completed in the month of October was Small Great Things by Jodi Pico. I buddy re read this with Mel over at That Girl Bookworm. I'll leave a link to her channel down below. This is Jodi Pico's most recent release and the only book by Jodi Pico I hadn't read. So I now have once again caught up on all of her books and I've read everything by her. She is an author that I personally really, really enjoy. She tackles really interesting issues, I believe, in her novels. And in this book, it is just the same. She is this book is about a um, African-American like labor and delivery nurse named Ruth. Yeah, Ruth. And um, one day she's been at her job for like, I don't know, like years and years, like a, quite a long time. And she's really, really good at it. And one day she goes into work as normal and she starts attending to this baby when it is made clear by the parents they do not want her touching their baby as they are white supremacists and they do not want a black person touching their baby. She is obviously very upset by this and very upset at the hospital for putting into place. They put a note on the file saying that no African-American people are to touch the baby. She is very upset by this, as you would be. And she is in the, um, I can't remember what it's called, the room where like the infants are kept. Um, and she's in there by herself and the baby goes into cardiac arrest. And... She has a dilemma whether to try to help the baby or not to help the baby. In the end, the baby ends up dying. And she is basically accused of causing this baby's death. And that's kind of like where the story goes from. As you can tell, this deals with some really, really important and very, like, current issues within the world today. I loved all the commentary in this on... It obviously talks about racism a lot, but not just really big racism, like with the white supremacists, like, you know, big picture racism, but like really like small level racism, not that it's small and that it doesn't matter, but that it happens all the time and people, you know, casual racism and inherent racism, the things that white people, myself probably included, do that is racist. And I really had to like, it made me really aware of my privilege while I was reading this. Um, I also thought that it had some really interesting commentary on the white supremacists themselves and that they are human. Their baby died and they are obviously hugely, hugely grief stricken by the loss of their child and why they have some very terrible beliefs. They are human beings and they are grieving the death of their child. And it just shows to show that just because they have this really disgusting belief does not mean that they aren't humans with human emotions and dealing with human issues. I found that really interesting. 
I overall really, really did like this book. There was an epilogue in it that I didn't really super love. I just felt parts of it were like kind of unnecessary, but this talked about some really important issues. I found it extremely interesting and really eye-opening, and I personally really enjoyed it, and I would recommend checking it out, and in the end, I gave this four stars. The next book that I completed was It's Kinda My Thing by K.S. Thomas. This is a book that I just had on my Kindle and I've, as you know if you've been watching my channel I've been trying to get through the backlog of books that I've had on my Kindle for forever. This is one of those, this is a new adult novel that follows a girl who had had some kind of relationship with this guy like years and years previously and she is now living in Las Vegas and she is working as a like doing like singing type of telegrams and one day she's given the job of going to this wedding and singing at this wedding and basically revealing to the groom at the wedding that the bride had been cheating on him and it turns out to be this guy who she had this relationship with years ago whose wedding she's kind of breaking up and the whole story kind of kicks off from there. It's your pretty typical new adult type novel, very tropey. I really didn't like it to be honest. I didn't think the writing was good. It was just basically one of those, it just had like no real plot either. It was just one of those books that seemed like it was just an excuse for the author to write some like new adult steamy novel. But then it didn't really have the level of like steamy scenes that I would expect in this type of new adult books where it didn't even really deliver on that front. Um, I will say that I gave this two stars and not one star. And the reason I gave it two stars was because the romance actually went in a direction that I did not expect. So I kind of appreciated and the author didn't necessarily, like, she kind of did manage to surprise me. So, like, that's a good thing. But overall, I just really didn't enjoy it. And as I said, I gave this one two stars. Next, I read Salt and Stone by Victoria Scott. So this is the second and final book that was published in this series. The author, I believe, planned to publish more novels, but then it didn't get picked up by the publisher. And so this is all we have. So it's not really, like, complete. And so I knew that going in, and so I was prepared to, like, not necessarily get a full resolution to, like, the overall, like, series arc, which is still disappointed, but I at least knew it going in. I enjoyed the romance in this series. I think a lot of people don't, but I personally did enjoy the romance. I also thought we got a lot of character development, like, good character development in this for the main character. I think she really grows as a person, which is really good. I just didn't love this as much as the first, as the first one, and the whole series overall, and I noticed it, like, even more so in this one, it's just so not believable. Like, there's just, it's just really hard to, like, put, because it, it is kind of set within our world, but in this whole different kind of things going on, but it is within our world, and so it's just really hard for me to just set aside what I know about our world and just kind of believe that this, like, is going on. But overall, I did enjoy it, and in the end, I gave this one three stars. Next, I read Silver Shadows by Rochelle Mead. This is the fifth book in the Bloodline series. Um, This one was... I'm not gonna lie, it was probably my least favorite of the series so far. I thought that this one was quite slow and dragged a lot, particularly through the middle, like given the events, which obviously I can't go into because of it being the fifth book in a series, but kind of because of what's going on in this book, I found it like quite slow. And like, as I said, it just dragged a lot. Um, I do think um, that I really liked it. It had a really action packed ending and I can't wait to see what's going to happen in the last book and how the kind of series is going to end up overall. I'm actually really excited to hopefully eventually soon, hopefully before the end of the year, even maybe finish this series and see how it wraps up. Um, as I said, it was my least favorite, but I did still really enjoy it. And in the end, I gave this one 3.5 stars. Next, I listened on audio to The Gentleman's Guide to Vice and Virtue by Mackenzie Lee. I was really excited to get to read this because my library quite often does not get like any like newer popular releases on audio, especially in like YA. So I was really excited when I saw this and I put it on hold as soon as I saw it and it did come in this month. And I will say that um, people have been talking about this audiobook a lot. It's been getting a lot of buzz. It is narrated by Christian Coulson, who from what I understand is the actor who played Tom Riddle in the um, Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets movie and I did think he did a really awesome job um, with the audiobook. Um, so this book, I'm sure you've heard what it's about but I'll go over it really quickly, is about um, a, a guy named Monty who is going on his kind of, it's like a tour of England, it's, it's historical fiction and back in the day you used to kind of go on this like European tour before he would have to go home and kind of become a man and take over his father's estate and he is going on the trip with his best friend um, Percy. So there's a lot of um, representation in this book. Um, Monty is a bisexual. Percy's 
um, sexual orientation is never explicitly said, but he is interested in boys, whether he's bisexual, pansexual, homosexual, I don't know, but he is interested in boys as well. And um, Percy is also biracial. And there is also some disability representation in this as well. Due to the time period, I will say that there are some trigger warnings for like some ableism and racism due to the time setting. I will also say that there are um, trigger warnings as well for abuse, um, parental abuse and for homophobia, obviously. Um, but I really loved the representation in particular of the bisexuality of um, Monty, because even though he, one of the main themes of the book is that he's been, he's in love with his best friend Percy and he has like this unrequited love and you know he doesn't want to have to go back to his estates and Percy's supposed to be going off to law school so they're kind of going to be separated and he doesn't want that and he's like in love with Percy or whatever but it is very clear in the book that he's bisexual he not only is like interested in Percy and like lusting after Percy this whole time but there are several moments in the book where he is interested very heavily in women as well and I just liked that the representation was so clear yes I'm totally into this male person and yes I'm totally into this female person as well because quite often I find when the book is the person is stated to be bisexual you never really see you only see their interest in like kind of one sex and not both and I liked that you really did see the full representation of his bisexuality I've loved the main character of Monty I thought he was a really great like narrator like main character's voice to have tell the story he was just really sassy and fun I thought the book was just like I just really enjoyed it. It was a lot of fun. Um, I know people have said that it kind of dragged in places for them. I didn't really find that overall. I just really, really enjoyed it. I gave it 4.5 stars. I'm really excited for the um, companion book that's going to come out about Monty's um, sister Felicity. Really excited to read that as well and I would definitely recommend this book. Next, also on audio, I listened to The Magnolia Story by Chip and Joanna Gaines. So if you don't know, Chip and Joanna Gaines are the um, stars of a um, television show called Fixer Upper and it's just a like lifestyle show where they buy a house like they help a couple buy a house and then completely renovate it for them into like a beautiful home and they've shot to quite a lot of fame since they starred on this show and this book is self-narrated by the two of them and it is just about kind of their lives of how they met and got started and started their business and kind of how they came to be the stars of Fixer Upper. I really enjoyed it. I found it really, really um, interesting because I do really like the reason why I believe the show is so popular is because of Chip and Joanna. They are really likable, fun people and that you just really like want to get to know. So I found it really interesting to kind of see their lives. I will say that it can get a little bit like much with its, um, representation not representation like Chip and Joanna are I guess Christian and they talk about she um the ma majority of the book is um narrated by Joanna and they do talk about God a lot and I'm not religious so it, it did feel a bit like over the top at times but at the same time I understand that that's who Chip and Joanna are as people so it didn't really bother me but just be aware that it is in there um, because they are Christians and I personally I just really really enjoyed it and I gave it four stars. Next also on audio I listened to This Is Where The World Ends by Amy Zhang. This is a dual perspective novel and um, it is dual narrated by Michael Crouch and Justice Boulding. Um, and I do like that kind of dual narration style. I've come to really enjoy that type of narration. So I did enjoy the audiobook. This is a young adult novel about two characters Janie and Micah who are best friends they're best friends but no one knows that they're best friends so they come from like quite different circles at school Micah is more of the you know loner alternative I guess type and Janie is like more of like a popular person but they've been best friends forever but like nobody knows that they're best friends and it's told in like a non-linear um style of story where Janie is missing and Micah has been in the hospital with an, an accident and he doesn't know like kind of what's happened to Janie and you kind of, you get the story from after everything's happened of Michael trying to kind of figure out what's going on and you also get from before, like leading up to the events and kind of what has gone on. I had real, real issues with this book. Um, I will say huge trigger warnings for rape, sexual assault and suicide. Um, Janie and Micah are supposed to be like 
best best friends, but Janie treats Micah like shit. I was just like, Micah, stand up for yourself. This is supposed to be your best friend. Do not let her treat you like that. But at the same time, I could kind of relate to it because I definitely had friends and even people I called my best friends in high school and stuff, in particular when I was a teenager, who really were not, did not treat me well, like as a friend. I think I've said that before. Um, I did have a lot of toxic friendships, like in my teenagers in particular, and I do enjoy friendship themes, but like this was just like next level, like in no way was she really like treating him as a good person. Like Micah is basically like in love with Janie, like he loves her and she's aware that he loves her and still she just like, she just like leads him on a lot and like plays around with his emotions and uses him because she knows that he's in love with her and there's a lot of the things that annoy me in this story that I can't talk about because it would just be huge spoilers, but I had real, real issues with the book. I did really like the writing, the way that the author told the story and the actual writing style. I did really enjoy. I could see myself reading more things by Amy Zhang in future, but oh boy, did this have some issues. In the end, I gave this 2.5 stars. Next, I read Daughter of Smoke and Bone by Lainey Taylor. So this is a young adult urban fantasy. Um, it's about a main girl um, named Karu who she lives in Prague which is awesome that I loved that this was set like outside of kind of the general settings that we see for books being like you know the western world and that this was set in Prague and she is an art student and she can go through, she goes through this door, which is kind of leads into, we don't really know what it is. It's kind of another world and there's all these like creatures that are not normal human creatures. And she helps, is kind of a helper for this main guy. Brimstone, I don't want to say too much more than that because it's the kind of book you do just kind of have to go in and just find your way through it. Um, I really enjoyed this. I loved the world, the world and stuff in this book and all like the creatures. It was just, it was so, so interesting. I really liked the main character of Karu. Lainey Taylor can fucking write. Her writing is really, really nice. I can see why people are like obsessed with her writing because it was really, really good. And probably my favorite thing about this is that the ending destroyed me, but it wasn't a cliffhanger. And, like, respect Lainey Taylor for doing that. She found a way to, like, completely kind of destroy you and get you going, oh, my God, and wanting to pick up a second book. But it wasn't really left off. I Like, I wouldn't call this a cliffhanger. And I just really thought, well done to you, Lainey Taylor. And in the end, I really, really did enjoy this, and I gave it 4.25 stars. Next, I listened to another audiobook, and that was Bitter Fruits by Alice Clark Platt. This is a kind of detective. I believe it's the first in a series. I think it's going to be one of those series where you just follow the main detective. Um, and she, at the start of the novel, a um, first year university student within the UK is found dead. And it's just about her investigating that death and trying to figure out who killed the girl. Um, basically, as I said, this was a, um, I did listen to this on audio and I'm going to read you off. This is narrated by five different people. So I'm just going to read you off their names. It was narrated by Kristen Atherton, Rachel Bavage, Roy McMillan, Stefan Booth, and Tanya Rodriguez. And I enjoyed the audiobook. It wasn't anything spectacular, but I didn't have any real problems with the audiobook in general. I found this book had a lot of interesting commentary in it. So I really thought that it had some great commentary in just general in the online world and online bullying and things like that and so definite um trigger warnings for bullying and self-harm in this book as well um but i th found the commentary like the way we put ourselves online and you know this whole thing of everyone knows that what you see online of people is not necessarily what their real lives are like i found that really interesting i also the main thing commentary in this that I really really found interesting was um the commentary so over the course of the novel I don't it's not this isn't really a spoiler it comes out that the main character the main character the girl who died Emily had been there were videos of her online of her performing certain sexual acts and things with I think one boy yeah one boy like from her university and they'd been put online and it's kind of a thing as to whether 
she knew that these videos were going up and whether she knew, you know, about what was happening. And there's just a lot of commentary in this about the things that girls do and that they do and say that they're doing because they are modern women who take control and... But that's not... Like, they say that that's why they're doing it, but it's not. Really, they're doing it because that's how they want to be perceived. They want to be perceived to be these women who are just, you know, in control of their body and can just do whatever they want and, you know, I can do whatever a man can do. But they do care and it's okay that you care. You don't have to be that type of person, but they want to be perceived to be that kind of girl who can do whatever she, you know, all these things and not care about it. I just found that whole commentary on that type of thing really, really interesting. Um, I didn't like the way... The mystery kind of wrapped up overall. Um, I can't really put my finger on what it was about this book. Like, I gave this a 3.5 star. I did enjoy it, but there were certain things about it. Like, I don't know. That just when I finished it, I was kind of like, okay. So, I didn't love it, but it was interesting, and it did definitely have some interesting commentary in it. Next, I read Girl in Snow by Danya Kafka. I'm probably butchering that. I apologize. Um, this is one that I was approved for on NetGalley. So, thank you so much to NetGalley and the publishers for approving me to read this one. This is another like mystery type of book about a girl who is found murdered and in this one you follow three particular characters. Um, you follow the girl who hated uh, the main character, you feel that the main character kind of destroyed her life. You follow the boy who is kind of the oddball boy who really doesn't fit in anywhere, who was in love with the main character and you also follow the detective who is investigating the death of this girl. Um, and so you kind of interchange between their different perspectives and try to figure out what happened. It sounds like a book that would be totally up my alley. I didn't love it. I'm not going to lie to you. I just really, I just really didn't like it. Um, I did have some interesting commentary once again on the way we present ourselves and people not always being what you think they are and that people, you know, there's a lot more that goes on kind of behind closed doors than what you know, you think, but I just, I didn't like any of the characters. I will say, again, this one has trigger warnings for um, anxiety and panic attacks, but I just really can't, I just found that overall, for a mystery novel like this, it was dull. Like, the book was just dull. That's the only way I can really describe it, but I just didn't love it, and in the end, I gave it 2.5 stars. Next on audio, I listened to Before the Devil Breaks You by Libba Bray. So this is the third book and the most recently published, like it just came out and I was so excited. I did have a physical copy of this, but I did manage to get it on audio and I've listened to all of these on audio. It is narrated by January Lavoy. She is by far my favorite audiobook narrator that I've ever listened to. She does such an amazing job and this one was no exception. It was just a really, really fantastic audiobook. This book, I really, really... I wasn't sure whether this book was kind of going to have like a plummet moment in the series, but for me, it really, really didn't. We've been waiting a long time for this book to come out, and I, it was well worth the wait, in my opinion. I really, really enjoyed it. Like, I really, really did enjoy it. There are a lot, it's hard for me to talk about what obviously happens in this book because it is the third book in a series, but like, shit goes down in this book. Like, without spoiling anything, people die. Like, there's deaths in this book, like characters die, there's like heartbreaking moments and like there's just so much that goes on. There was some kind of dicey moments in this book around like a sexual assault issue which I wasn't like too like crazy about with what went on but so many the characters like grow so much and like if you think about the characters and like what's happening in this book compared to like what was going on in the first book, like the growth is just crazy. I'm so invested in all of these characters. Um, I will say there are trigger um, warnings in this one for abuse, sexual assault and racism. Um, we also get the introduction in this book of um, a character who I'm not sure if you would say lesbian or bisexual. I believe she's supposed to be a lesbian, but I'm not 100% sure on that, but it also it seemed like she is going to be asexual, a lesbian asexual character, like, fuck yes, Lim Bray. And, like, with all the representations she's already got in here, we already have homosexual characters, we've got Asian characters, we have black characters, we've now got, like, a lesbian asexual character. Like, there is so much representation in this, and for a book set in the 20s, it's just, like, there's so much going on. There's also, like, issues... Like commentary on like you know um the different um like socioeconomic issues that some of them are like richer you know more well-to-do people and then you've got you know these african-american characters in the 20s who are like living in harlem and someone who's living in like chinatown within new york and it's just it's just 
it's crazy. I this the amount of representation and like issues, the creep factor in this one was just as like on point to me as that from the first one because I did think the second book lacked a little bit from the real creepiness that we had going on in the first book. It was totally back for me in this book. I really, really enjoyed it, and in the end, I gave this 4.25 stars. Next, I read Days of Blood and Starlight by Lainey Taylor. So this is the second book in the Daughter of Smoke and Bone trilogy. I did really like this. I didn't love this quite as much as the first book, but I did still really like it. As I've said, Lanny Taylor's writing um, is amazing. The world building and like the, the general like mythology of the world, like Lanny Taylor has done so, so well with. Um, I really do like the writing. Like I say, it's just the writing I think that's Lanny Taylor's real like crowning jewel of what, you know, really brings you in with her books. Um, I did get a little bit confused in this one because there's a lot of like, like character kind of names in this that are not your normal type of names that I was starting to get a little bit confused with but I did really really enjoy this and in the end I gave this one four stars. Next I read The Pearl Thief by Elizabeth Vine. So this is book 0 0.5 in the series. Um, so we had Codename Verity and then we had Rose Under Fire and now this book is set um, before those two books. So this isn't a World War II book because it's set before the war um, when Juliet follows Julie when she is a um, teenager. And I just, I don't know, it felt very unnecessary to me, this book. I didn't really understand what the point of it was because obviously the first two books were both set in World War II and then this just was completely different. I didn't love it. I found it quite dull and boring if I'm being honest. I did like the relationship between um, Ellen and Julie. I found that really interesting. Um, and I did really like getting to see kind of like how Queenie got her nickname. That was like a really fun like little tidbit in there. But apart from that, I just didn't really get the point of this and I just didn't love it and I thought it was boring um, and I gave it 2.5 stars. Next, I read A School for Unusual Girls by Kathleen Baldwin. So this is the first book in the Strange House series and it follows, it's set around the time of the Napoleonic um, like wars and it follows a girl who is not doing well like with her parents her parents like she's a troublesome you know girl and girls are supposed to you know at this time just do whatever their parents tell them and be really ladylike and proper and things like that and she's interested in science and learning and is always getting into trouble and doing experiments that go awry and you know all of that kind of thing and at the start of the book her parents take her to strange house which is like this boarding school that has this reputation for being really strict and hard on the girls and basically whipping them into shape to be ladies. So her parents drop her off at this school and it becomes evident to her pretty quickly that this school is not everything that it seems. Um, and it kind of comes at, like across pretty quickly that um, maybe don't continue watching this if you don't want to be, I don't really consider this a spoiler, but maybe like you would. So if you don't want to be spoiled like at all, then maybe um, just click forward until the picture of this book goes away. Um, the girls at this school do have like some kind of abilities and the main downfall for me with this book was that it was just so underdeveloped. The whole school and the abilities thing was just so so underdeveloped. The book is really quite short. Like how many pages was this book? It was like just over 300 pages and I just thought it could have been so much longer and so much more put into developing um, these girls and their abilities and like no she obviously when she goes to this school doesn't know that that's what it's for and it's never like really explained to her what the school is or like what these abilities are or and then but like by the end of the book she just kind of knows but no one's ever like told her but like they talk to her about it like as if they've told her and like the whole thing was just like a bit weird and underdeveloped the story is also a bit insta lovey it's nothing groundbreaking like this book, but I did personally, I did really enjoy it. Like it was an enjoyable read and I will um, keep going with the series. I believe that the next book isn't like a direct, it, uh, I think it's like a companion book. I think it follows one of the other girls, which I'm interested in, particularly because I, that girl who is someone who knows entirely about the school and the abilities and things. So I'll be interested to read a book from her perspective. Um, but yeah, I definitely thought that this book could have used some work basically but I did enjoy it and in the end I gave this one 3.25 stars. Next I completed Dreams of Gods and Monsters by Lainey Taylor. Again really enjoyed this. Again Lainey Taylor's writing was really really good. I really enjoyed the kind of coming together um, that we have in this book. That's all I can really say without spoiling um, anything. I also again without spoiling anything I really liked that this book doesn't have some kind of like 
epic happily ever after type of ending. I'm not saying necessarily that it's not a happy ending or not a sad, but it's not one of those endings where you get. And then these two characters ended up together and got married and had three children and these two side characters ended up together and they got married and their children you know all grew happily together it's not that type of ending which i appreciated because in this type of book with like the things that are going on in this series it just would have felt really false to me to have that type of thing in there so i really appreciated that the author was more like restrained with her ending and i think that's probably something a lot of people had a problem with like from the reviews that i saw a lot of people were like you know that's like how you're going to end it off but I thought it was more of an honest ending for like the type of books that this is and as I said I did really really enjoy this and again I gave this one four stars. So I forgot to mention when I was doing my statistics I did also DNF a book this month that was Six Moon Summer by S.M. Rain. This is another one of the random Kindle books that I had that I was trying to get through. I actually had the whole first four books in like a bind up on my Kindle and I didn't make it very far through this. I read 31 pages and then I was just like nah not going to keep going. This is kind of your really typical YA paranormal story about a girl who goes to a, her parents are getting a divorce and so they send her to this summer camp to kind of like get her like out of their hair while they're going through this divorce and it's an all girls summer camp but there is a boys camp across the lake and there's this boy who she keeps seeing and then there's, she is being bullied by the girls in the camp, like doesn't have any friends at the camp and she tries to run away into the woods and then there's this whole like attack thing and you basically know from the synopsis that she's being attacked by a werewolf and that she's going to have to like do something in order to try like not become a werewolf or something. I don't know. It was really cliche. The writing was not good in my opinion and quite frankly I just didn't give a shit to keep reading like especially when I had the whole like first four books um, I just really didn't care and like I said the writing was just like not great and I could tell it wasn't going to be something that I like super loved so I just decided I wasn't going to go any further with it. So I did DNF that one. And the final book that I read in the month of October was another book that I listened to on audio and that was Romancing the Duke by Tessa Dare. This book is narrated on audio by Carmen Rose and at first I wasn't in love with her narration style. I didn't find the voices that she did for guys that great but as the series sorry as the book went on I did like become more used to her narration song and I did start to enjoy it a lot more um so Tessa Dare she's been getting quite a bit of buzz like on booktube lately like a lot of people have been talking about her books in particular I think the book, main book that gets mentioned is When a Scott Ties the Knot and I looked into that book and realized that it was the third book in a series so I decided to start with the first one which is this one Romancing the Duke. I will say that even though this is a series, I don't know why I put three fingers up, <laughs> this is a series, um, it's not like a typical series and not even a typical series in that it's a companion series because Literally the only link that these books have is that they're set in castles. So the series is called the Castles Ever After series and they're set in castles. But they're not even linked in that. And you know how normally in these companion series it's like you have your main couple in the first book and then the second book will be like about his brother or his friend or her sister or her friend or someone like a new, it's like a linked character. That's not the case in this. Literally the characters do not know each other. It's just literally, so you don't have to read these together is what I'm saying. You could read all of these books on their own if you chose. I, being the person that I am, wanted to start at the start. So I did. And listen to this first one, Romancing the Duke. I will say, um, it was pretty good as far as historical, like, romances go. I have read a lot of historical romance in my time, but I'd never read any Tessa Dare, so I was really excited to give her a go. I will say her books are very, like, steamy and sexy, and I was actually listening to this at work, which got a little bit awkward because... Let me just tell you as a warning, the main, um, not the main character, sorry, the author, she loves the word cock. I'm just going to say it. That word is in there a lot. And spoiler alert for my November wrap up, uh, I have already read a couple of these um, further books in the series in November and the word cock is just used a lot. So just warning, if you don't like that word, definitely don't listen to it on audio because you're going to have that thing said into your ear a lot. Um, but it was as far as historical romance because they were really, really enjoyable. It was really sexy. I will say that this one has the whole like trope of a plain girl falling in love with a blind guy, like kind of going on. Which to me, that whole is just like it's a bit on the nose. But I did really, really enjoy it. It was a very, very enjoyable historical romance. I gave this four stars. And I'm the type of person who I like compare apples to apples. So like if I compare this four star book to like this four star book, 
not even on the same playing field. But when I'm talking about romance books in general, this was a very, very solid romance novel in my opinion, and it is a four star romance novel. So I did give it four stars and I really enjoyed it. And as I've already spoiled, I have continued on with this series. So if you are looking for just a really fun, lighthearted, easy, sexy kind of romance to pass a fun afternoon or couple of days, then definitely check this book out. So those were the 16 books that I completed in the month of October. I want to take this opportunity to apologize for how long this video is because I I always say that I'm going to go through the books really quickly, but then I just can't. I really do like to give my full opinion on the books wherever I have like a lot of thoughts and like go into why I liked them and didn't like them because that's the whole point of booktube in my opinion. But anyway, I know that this was a long video, so I do apologize. I would love to chat with you in the comments down below if you've read any of these books, if you have any thoughts on them, or any books that you were reading in the month of October that you were really enjoying or not enjoying, I would love to chat down below. Please like this video if you liked it. Please subscribe if you want to see more from my channel. That's all I've got for this video today. Bye, guys!